Hello, Tim here. Welcome to my channel. You're walking through a big store, uh, say Menards or Home Depot or Lowe's, and like I did the other day, you see a set of carving tools. And you think, well, that's not too expensive. Maybe that'd be good for the grandkids or my son or daughter for a birthday present because they talk about wood carving. So you have a set of six tools in this particular set that I, I bought. And I just want to do a little analysis and to see if they're worth anything at all and compare them to uh, a gouge that's a full-size gouge. This is one of my favorite tools and it's hand forged. This one here is, is factory made. I don't really even know if the steel is very good on this, uh, this one here, but let's just give it a test. So a tool like this, just one of them, now this is an antique one, but you get one equivalent of uh, say a uh, uh, Stubai or Henry Taylor, uh, Swiss made, you could buy at least two or three sets of these for the price of one of these. So that's kind of a big consideration. Let's take a look at each individual tool in this set. The plain chisel that I have, there was of chisels, there was a skew chisel and two straight chisels. And the only difference between these two chisels, well, this one's sharpened on both sides, and this one's just sharpened on one side, but it's bent. It's a bent chisel. And that works pretty good. I've already sharpened this one up, but that works pretty good for cleaning the background of something or clearing over, over an obstruction. This would work as well. So these two are, are fairly uh, useful tools. Now this is a full-size equivalent and this one is happens to be made by marples which has been bought out by Irwin and you no longer can get marples tools but the equivalent of this it's gonna I don't know the current price but it's gonna be uh, at least thirty dollars this is a bigger one of the same type carving chisel beveled on two sides and the difference between these two uh, gouges, which is like this, one's bent and one's straight, but it's the same sweep. This one I've already honed and, and sharpened, and I'll do a test cut in a minute here. This one, I, I've only ground it. And the one thing I noticed when I picked, out, picked up the set is I needed to reshape. This one was really wide, and I ground the sides down to make it more useful and change the pitch a little bit so I had to just kind of reshape the tool and I did I reshaped all these tools this this one I put a little bit of a crown to it which I do on some of my tools this one I'm just going to do straight across and the only difference like I said is this is this is a bent tool and then there's a V tool and this one I had to work on the most on the grinder. Now in another video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to sharpen V-tools. At With the grain right now, this will still cut, but it, it doesn't cut real well. I can feel it dragging and it kind of tears it. This is a white pine. And this is not too bad of a cut. But compared to this, I find so much smoother. And the difference I would say between this one here, other than the obvious size, is that this edge is not going to hold up. The beauty of it is it's easy to sharpen again. But I would say that you're limited to, to staying with really soft woods like basswood or, or white pine or something like that. So I'm going to go through a little bit of uh, refresher on, on uh, sharpening a gouge. 
you can see it more in detail in my other video on sharpening a gouge but I can see that just in a really few passes I've already cut the metal pretty quickly so I go to the Arkansas stone which is a finer cut and I'm right there I mean it's just it, it you can sharpen fairly quick but the flip side is it gets dull fairly quick too dull tools are more dangerous than sharp ones because you apply more pressure and you're apt to slip I'm using this uh, rounded slip stone and you can see it's cutting the metal fairly quick don't have to do too much and then I'm gonna go to the grinding wheel the buffing wheel the steel in these is soft enough that sometimes all you got to do is just buff it and you're good now my end grain test that I like to do it's pretty sharp it does a pretty good job whether it keeps an edge or not for very long how long you can work with it it all depends but that's it as far as how these are only going to get so sharp you can get it really really sharp but it's not going to stay sharp and it's, it sharpens quickly but it dulls quickly so in a nutshell uh might be worth considering if but you you need to be prepared when you when you take a, a tool out of the box just off the shelf like that you're going to have to get it honed and get it shaped right in order to get a good uh, result and stay with the so really softer woods and if you're just going to explore i'd say give it a go you don't have too much into it and uh, but be careful uh, they get dull quick and uh, being short like this there's no shoulder on the tool to keep it from driving into the handle so you would never drive these with a mallet and and for a professional carver uh, this is this is a little too short of a handle and you don't get the control but it is um, a very low investment to just give it a try so I think it's worth it and my granddaughter is going to be the beneficiary of this one and uh, hope you find something encouraging and give it a, give it a try please subscribe and, and uh, give it a thumbs up and if you got any comments please let me know that too and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.